this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Dah. Welcome back to my channel. We are here for another one of our mass making sessions. We are up to week number 172, would you believe? So, yep, for anybody who doesn't follow my channel, we are doing reruns. So we are rerunning week number 72, so week number 172. And what we are making this week, we are going to make double envelopes um, for your junk journals. And yep, we're um, yep, we're just going to kind of mass make a bunch of those. Now I'm just going to alter my camera slightly because I feel like it's perhaps not in frame quite enough. So hopefully that's better. Now, if you're wanting to craft along with me today, what you're going to need is you're going to need a bunch of different papers. Now I have bought along principles, and I see you say this every week. I've bought along principles because they are obviously predominantly what I have nowadays. Um, you do not have to use printables, you can use um, you know, scrapbook paper, you could maybe use book page, and I the reason I'm saying kind of maybe is I'm just trying to kind of think whether they would work very well. I mean, I wouldn't personally use anything too, too thick. So if you're using scrapbook paper, probably not the thickest, you know, when it's like 270 GSM, things like that. So kind of like, say, 180 and beneath, things like that. Um, and again, if you're using book page, I wouldn't use anything too brittle or anything too um, flimsy. Um, yeah, maybe like a sort of coffee table book um, type book page would work really quite nicely for this. I'm just trying to kind of think, uh, you know, around the book page types really. Um, but something like that. So my printables, these are printed on, it's just slightly thicker than copy paper. So I think mine is 102 GSM, 103, something like that. So, I mean, it's not thick by any stretch of the imagination, but it is you know it is definitely thicker than um you know your normal copy paper now these couple of sheets here these are printed on 200 gsm so they are thicker um but they're not too too thick so i think they would probably still work so yep you're going to need a bunch of papers you're going to need your scissors you may or may not need a bone folder you know if you like to use a bone a bone folder then you may like to use obviously a bone folder and you're going to need some glue. Now, I use Anita's Tacky Glue. I just happen to have put it into this Sugar Bell icing bottle. And these bottles are available available on Amazon. And I'm just saying all of this, sorry to, you know, harp on. It's just that I get kind of questions all the time about the glue that I use or like if you use a bottle and things like that. So, you know, I'm just kind of putting it out there what I'm using. You may want to have some um, Distress Ink. I'm using... Uh, walnut stain at the moment is the colour that I'm using but again you know you could use anything obviously a very popular one is vintage photo um, so you may want to have your distress ink sorry I was just trying to locate mine so yeah I've got walnut stain distress ink and you may want to have a glue spreader to spread your glue aside from that I find it handy to have like a dried baby wipe or something to just dab away the glue um, and I think that's probably pretty much it to be honest uh yeah, I think that's it. If you like to use a paper trimmer instead of your scissors, then of course you may like to have that. Um, but I think that's it. So yeah, let's get uh, along with making some. Now, we will decorate one up at the end, but on the whole, I don't really decorate um, my pieces up. You know, I like to leave them blank canvases. Ah, the only other thing that I was going to say, yeah, I knew there was something I've forgotten. You may like to have double-sided. Now, the reason being is because these are going to open, so envelope flaps, you know, that open. So you may like to have them double-sided. Alternatively, you may like to have them coffee-dyed, you know, even if it's just on the side that you're going to be using. So I'm going to kind of demonstrate, basically. I've got some coffee here, um, and it's just literally, it's a mix of, you know, just coffee that I've, you know, just like to keep to the side of my desk. Um, it's just black coffee. I just use the cheapest coffee that I can buy. Um, and then what happens is I leave it, you know, on my desk or, you know, behind my desk. And then as it's left, it tends to get darker. Um, so when I come to use it, I just top it up with a bit more water. And actually, I just use cold water for that. Because otherwise, it does get very, very dark. So hopefully, it's not too dark, too dark today because I have actually watered it down again um, just a few minutes ago. So let's get making some of this and I will show you, you know, how I'm going to kind of coffee dye mine. So all you're going to do is take your A4 sheet. OK, so mine is an A4 sheet. It's, you know, fresh off the printer and I'm just going to fold it up as if I were making an envelope. So what I like to do 
is just fold it up like this and then fold your flaps down and I like to leave a little bit of a gap so that I can easily get into my envelope so kind of like this where you've got then you know a good sort of amount to be able to kind of get into your envelope if you see what I mean so we just fold that down like that and then all you're going to do because what we want is two identical size envelopes so we're going to take this and we're going to just fold it back on itself is is the easiest way I think so fold it back on itself so just being a bit careful there of those creases and like I say you can use your scissor handles or your bone folder for this either would be fine squish it all down and then I'm just going to cut it here along that edge and this paper this is from my great expectations um paper line it's my newest um kit in my shop so absolutely love these papers so then all I'm going to do is just to save on the coffee dyeing process I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to just coffee dye the bits that are going to be visible from here and this is just a kind of time saving thing so with my coffee dye that I've just got here I'm just going to go in and just coffee oops just coffee dye basically just the flap really and this little bit that's going to show when my envelope's closed like that okay so I'm just going to do that and that just is a time saving thing so you don't have to obviously coffee dye your entire sheets of paper but just a quick sort of paint when you come to use them um you know I just find that's quite a quick and easy way to do it now I'm going to just try this quickly with my heat tool only because obviously this is a mass making session so I want to be able to demonstrate completely the whole process rather than be sat here waiting for this to dry so we'll just dry it off with the heat tool now because I've only obviously coffee dyed this small amount it shouldn't need ironing if I were coffee dyeing like the entire sheet the chances are I would have to iron this really to get a really good you know um flat piece but I won't do that for this so you've got your envelope shape pieces here and then all you want to do is decide which piece you want on the front. So for me, I would like this piece showing and you're going to kind of double line them like this. So take your, your first flap and it's going to line up with your second flap, if that makes sense. So basically, they're going to just sit in neatly together and then they're going to join up here. Now, let me put my glasses on for this bit because otherwise I'm not going to be able to see very well. So you're just going to run your glue straight around on that flap like that. OK, and you're going to just glue them down together. Press them in with my my wipes. Oops, I've got two there. And then if you want to, you can use your, you know, your glue spreader to just spread that glue out and then like that okay and that's all there is to these and then obviously you want to seal them up like an envelope so I'm just going to run glue down here now if you're concerned that this is going to be a little bit um you know flimsy to put pieces in what you could do is just fold this over just a little tiny sliver across the top to just sort of give that a thicker piece there so like that glue that down like that okay so again just spread that glue and this is just an optional thing you know you may feel confident that you're not going to tear your paper I'm pretty clumsy so you know for me this is kind of like a safety precaution okay and then you're just going to run your glue straight down the edge now of course you could sew these but I like to try and keep the mass making as much as possible unless I feel it's something that really looks drastically rubbish you know um, for not being sewn i.e it looks drastically better for being sewn then I'll just glue mine together because I know that not everybody's got a sewing machine and not everybody likes to use their sewing machine with their paper and you know what have you so I like to just kind of make it completely universally universally oh gosh look at what I've done there so as you can see, I've obviously kept that pressed down for too long. And so now I've kind of semi-glued that, but that's fine. 
yeah, I like it to be kind of as access accessible to everybody as possible. So again, just going to fold this over like that. Just squish that down and then get my glue. And I mean, literally that's like a couple of millimeters that I've just been bent that over, you know, folded that over. It's just to strengthen this slightly. That's all that we've done that for. Okie doke, and press that in like that. Again, you know, you might want to use your glue spreader. That just kind of like really gets that glue nice and flat and evenly spread. And then you're just going to then run your glue straight down the side of here. One and two. Now, obviously, you could put thumb holes in these if you want, um, you know, kind of however you like. I'm not going to do that because I've obviously folded my tops over so as to, you know, reinforce them and make them a bit stronger. If I were using slightly thicker paper, I maybe would put a thumb hole into my, you know, my envelope pieces. But that's it. So what you've got then is you've got your envelope flap and then you've got one envelope and two. So aren't they just so cute? And obviously then this could be just glued straight into your journals. You'd have envelope here and then an envelope there. Now, obviously, because I've used A4 paper, this would be, you know, full width of the page, if you see what I mean. So you may want to trim yours down slightly before gluing. You know, it's up to you. But of course, you could just tuck this in with a paper clip. This could go into a pocket. You know, they're nice and flat, even though you've got kind of two pockets there. So that's all there is to them. I mean, they couldn't be easier, could they? So let's put that to one side and we'll do another one. So I'm just going to take another one from that same paper, paper line. So this again is from the Great Expectations kit. So all I'm going to do is again, decide which way up I want my envelope. So kind of like this, we're just going to fold it up here. Did you hear little feet? There were little feet there. So yeah, for anyone who doesn't watch my channel, we are trialing a little doggy at the moment. And yep, I don't know whether she's actually come into my room. I can't see the other side of my desk, but I bought her bed in here for if she wants to. Now I'm filming this on the Monday, um, you know, ready to go up for you guys on the Tuesday. So it is actually bank holiday. So everybody's home today. So, um, you know, I'm not sure whether she's actually in here or not. Right, then you're going to obviously take your piece, fold it in half here. This is where you then, you know, can cut it down. So you've got two identical size envelopes so one like that take my bone folder squish it down and then like that so again then we cut it down now at this point i'm going to cut this slightly more like that because like i said otherwise it's quite wide for the page if you see what i mean so by just doing that I've bought it in slightly so this would fit now as a pocket on a page. So then all I'm going to do is exactly as we did before, I'm just going to coffee dye this. So and obviously if this were double sided now, you know, or had I coffee dyed it already or whatever, you know, I wouldn't need to even bother with this step. You know, and hey, I mean, you might not even mind yours being plain white, you know, and that's absolutely fine too. Um, but this is just a kind of suggestion for if you're not keen on white, you know, but maybe your pieces are fresh off the printer like mine, mine are, or, you, you know, you don't want to kind of have to just now coffee dye everything. This is just a quick and easy way of just, you know, getting that coffee dyed effect. So again, just going to dry that with my dryer. And I'm just going to put this in between two books. So here's my daughter with the doggy. Now, just wondering whether I would be able to show you the doggy. I don't think I can really because um, I will definitely film her at some point so that you can see her. But yeah, probably not today because um, my room's a bit of a tick. And so she's not going to fit here to be able to show you. So uh, I will try and show you her another time. Okay, right, so fold that over there and over there so again what we're going to do is just fold this in by that millimeter and like I say this is completely an optional step if you are happy and confident to have yours just folded you know like that 
with just your kind of copy paper thickness, you can obviously bypass this step. For me, it's a kind of like, oh, I don't want to, um, you know, tear the paper. So that's the only reason why I'm doing this. So we're just going to open this out, press, oh, you know, sorry, glue across there like that. Okay, and then just go in there. She's not 12 years old. Oh, is she? I don't know how you do um, dog ears. How do you work them out? Is it something like one? What is? What are dog ears? Are they six years to every year? Because I think she's two in real life. So is it six years per dog year? I don't know. That would work out, wouldn't it? Right, okay, so then just going to then decide which piece do I want at the front? So I, which one of the patterns do I want at the front? I mean, to be honest, they're both really pretty, aren't they? But I think, yeah, I think I really love the building. So again, just going to put that in there and then we're going to fold this over like this. And then we're just going to glue our flaps down. So glue around, oh dear, around the edge. Oh my goodness. Oh, could I be any messier with that glue? Don't know what was going on there, but yeah. Oh my goodness, look at the state of that flap. <laughs> because I was obviously watching my daughter who was in here then picking up the dog saying, oh, look at, look at the dog or something. I don't know. Anyway, distracting. Just I'll just blame other people for my shoddy, shoddy gluing. Right, okay, so glue that down like that. Okay, let's just get that glue out. I must have really done a lot of glue on there, I think. So, right, okay. So that's my envelope flap. Now, obviously, as you can see, I mean, I've got some glue oozing out here, but I can either trim this down where I've not made a very good job, or when I come to use this, you know, I probably put some lace or something along here anyway. So, you know, it's not really going to be showing. It's not really going to be a big deal. And then again, just want to glue my envelope pouch, if you like, the pouch. Glue that up here, like that. Okay? So, like that. Um, okie dokie, that one. And then this one here, again, just straight down that edge and last that edge. Okay, and then we just glue that one down and that one down. So I'm just going to get a fresh, fresh wipe. Okay, and that's again all there is to that. So again, you've got envelope flap here open that up and you've got your envelope here and your envelope here so they're really easy aren't they you know they look again and I say this you know most weeks actually they look like quite a sophisticated piece but they're actually very very quick and easy so that's what we like isn't it you know sophisticated looking but quick and easy to make so I think what we'll do we'll just get mass making some now so I'll top, stop talking you through the process and we will just kind of mass make them um yeah and we'll just relax and have a nice time i will of course try and remember to uh, mention the kits that i'm using as we go but aside from that i will just yeah just get cracking and we'll do them kind of assembly line style so we'll do you know same stages per bits of paper if you see what i mean so i think i'll probably do all the folding and then all the cutting and then you know all the, all the coffee dye and all the gluing so yeah so let's just kind of relax now have a nice time so this is obviously my first video that i've been filming kind of you know i know this isn't live but this is to me this feels like a live video um because it's the only video that i do that's going out like as close to live time as possible i i film it and then it goes out the next day so yeah my first video that i've done like you know in live time since christmas so i know i have said it obviously in my series and in my new year's day video and things but yeah i'll just say it again i hope everyone had a really wonderful christmas this was bird chase papers by the way from my shop so yeah this is my um my vintage headers
so I thought these would be quite nice. I don't know quite how it's going to look because of course, you know, they've got kind of portions of the headers, but hopefully it's going to still, you know, have a nice effect, so you'll see. So yeah, I can't believe we're in 2023 already. I mean, how fast does the time go? It's just whizzing by, absolutely whizzing by. So um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, things are going well with the dog. So my daughter's back in the room now with with the dog. So, and the dog's name is Bo. And I'm sure that I did say that already. So yeah, she's named after like Bo Peep. Um, and I think I have said this before. So again, I do apologize if I'm repeating myself. Um, so she was my sister's dog and my sister had three. Uh, right. So this, as you can see, I printed this borderless, but it hasn't quite got a border, but that's fine because I'm going to be cutting bits off and folding them over. So I think that will still work fine. So I'm just going to fold this up here. So this is from my Rose Park um, printables. So yeah, my sister had three um, sausage dogs and she was just struggling really to cope with three. You know, three is quite a lot, isn't it? And um, yeah, she was struggling to cope with three, but her three sausage dogs, she'd got them kind of at separate times. Although Bo, the one that we now are, you know, trialing, um, she is the baby of my sister's male and female dog. So she has got Slinky and she has got Jessie and now she's got, or, you know, now we have got, obviously at the moment, Bo, Bo Peep, and she named them after basically the um, characters on Toy Story. So of course, the first one being Slinky, because there is of course the toy called Slinky, who is a sausage dog. And then in Toy Story 2, there's the cowgirl called Jessie. So that's who her next one was named after. This is my brown um, buildings and architecture um, pages. And then, um, now, I'm just wondering, actually, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. So, yeah, then um, her, yeah, there, anyway, sorry, I've lost my thread now. Um, yeah, they're all named anyway after the, um, the toys in Toy Story. So, the Toy Story movies. So, yeah, there was Bo Peep, if, if you haven't seen those movies. So, yeah. And who doesn't like Toy Story? I mean, come on. Everyone likes Toy Story films, don't they? So, uh, yeah. What can I do? Yes, darling. Oh, that's show. not really very practical, but yeah, we'll do it another day. Because that would be a nightmare. That would be a nightmare. She does like being here. I hope she's going to be a good girl during the week because, um, like I say, this is bank holiday. So currently my daughter and my son, they're kind of still home. So my daughter's not going back to school till tomorrow. So tomorrow is going to be the first day that, you know, it's just going to be me and Bo. So I'm not sure how it's going to go when I'm trying to film and it's just me and her. That's why I'm thinking, you know, I've put her bed in here. I've got my lovely fan heater, which I am loving so much. So I'm hoping that actually, you know, she's just gonna kind of go in her bed while I'm filming and be a good girl. But obviously I won't know till tomorrow because, you know, that's the only bit that's kind of causing me a little bit of nervousness is, you know, I need her to obviously, you know, be good and not be a nuisance while I'm trying to work. So, um, but touch with, I can't tell you how much we are loving her. She is being such a good girl, isn't she, sweetie? And we are loving having her around. I think she's the covers the bed by those strokes. This is the Paris Bouquet papers, by the way. Um, just having a look to see what other paper I've got, because it's nice when you do different, different papers. So I'm wondering that one or that one. These are from the Belgian Blue papers. So yeah, we are absolutely loving having her. Um, honestly, 
I mean, so many of you have commented. So thank you so much for your lovely comments. And I just couldn't agree more because so many of you have said, oh, dogs are so loving. They're so, you know, part of the family and, you know, all these lovely things. And oh, you are so right. She is just, oh, lovely. I mean, I can't even explain, but the nice feeling like feels so homely. Just even like in the evening when we're watching TV, I mean, for a start, she's a lovely cuddler and she just really wants to be where you are and cuddled up. But on the odd occasion that she isn't, which I have to say is, you know, quite rare. Right, I'm going to cut all these down now and then I'm going to go through and coffee dye the ones that need coffee dyeing. So I'm going to cut them over like we did with the other one where we're making them slightly smaller. So if they wanted to be pockets, they could be. Um, yeah, she's a lovely cuddler, and um, but on the odd occasion that she's not been cuddling up with us, you know, she's just been like, say, in her little dog bed um, in the room where we're like watching TV. Oh my goodness, it is so lovely just having her even in the room. It just feels like, oh, just lovely. And I can't even put it into words. I mean, it sounds such a weird thing to say, but... It's just kind of lovely seeing her face there. I've had to cut that border off, so that's why I've um, cut that, in case you were wondering. Uh, yeah, it's just so lovely seeing her little face and her little body there. In her bed, she just looks so cute. So, uh, yeah, a bit of a sucker I am for, for cute things. Yeah, she's absolutely lovely. So, and I think I talked previously about she's obviously very attached to my son already. Um... Oh, and he's obviously going back to work tomorrow. So I'm just praying that she's going to kind of, you know, be okay with me, like I say. So I'm just going to coffee dye all the ones that need coffee dyeing now. And then I can kind of dry them all on, you know, on mass. And then, you know, glue them all on mass as well. So, yeah, she um, she's very attached to him. But I have to say, the last couple of days... She's gradually kind of like, I mean, she is still very, very attached to him. He's still like her favourite person. But she is gradually kind of like um, attaching to, to me, which is like really, really exciting. Um, and I'm not saying that she's got like order of favourites, but I guess it's kind of like who does the most for her. So, I mean, obviously she's sleeping with my son. So, you know, of course she deems he's, he's her person, if you know what I mean. But then obviously next is, is me because I'm the person who's, you know, letting her out and things like that mainly. Um, so, yeah, she's kind of like, you know, so of course my daughter's then very upset. Keep saying, oh, she doesn't like me. She doesn't like me. I said, she does like you. But, you know, she just obviously she's kind of gradually, gradually getting used to everybody and deciding, you know, not who she likes best. I mean, that would be like a strange thing to say, but... You know just she's yeah finding her feet and learning who does what you know whose roles are what so you know I guess it takes a while doesn't it you know and it's very early days for her so I've had to explain all this to my daughter so um yeah but oh my goodness she is so cute honestly so <laughs> last night she just literally like I've talked about this before she's a sausage dog and Apparently, you know, historically, they used to hunt badgers, I think I'm right in saying. I mean, I feel a bit strange in case I'm saying complete rubbish here, but I'm sure somebody said to me, oh, they, they hunt badgers, you know, kind of like that's their, you know, that was their, their reason, you know. Um, so they love to burrow. And oh my goodness, she is so cute. In my son's bed... <laughs> A couple of times now, yeah, a couple of times, maybe more. I've said to him, you know, I've gone up to his room and said, you know, where is she? And she's in his bed. And I'm not kidding, I mean like proper in his bed, like under the covers in his, in his bed. So, um, yeah, she obviously loves, loves being under the covers. And he said, well, that's just really weird because I would feel like I would be like suffocating her, you know, feel terrified in case like she suffocates. But she loves it. And so she's actually taken to sleeping kind of about like knee to feet, you know, position in the bed under the covers with him. So honestly, it's so cute. And um, yeah, oh, she's so cute. So yeah, she's 
Well, she pretty sweet and she's um yeah we're all loving her let's let's just say we're all loving her i have been completely suckered in already so who knows let's hope that we might be able to um keep her i will obviously keep you all posted okay there we go So, yeah, I mean, I can totally get what so many of you were saying about how lovely and, you know, just how nice it is having dogs. We did have a family dog when I was growing up. Um, her name was Bonnie, and she was a Bichon Freeze. Now, I'm a sucker for small dogs, I have to say. I don't really do big dogs. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, I can see how they're kind of nice. They can go on long walks and all of that kind of thing. Um, and they, you know, perhaps make you feel very protected and stuff. But for me, I like a small dog that I can pick up. You know, something that's not going to drag me down the street. <laughs> you know, I mean, my sister had a Labrador once. Um, sadly, you know, he passed away. And he was such a lovely, gentle giant. But he was quite a big Labrador. And Labradors kind of come in different sizes, don't they? You know, but I, I remember I worked with someone and her Labrador was very small and dainty. So my sister's was like a great big, you know, Labrador, but he was so lovely. But you know, he weighed eight stone, eight stone. I mean, that's a whole person, isn't it? So yeah, I mean, definitely they're kind of like different, um, you know, different, yeah, like weights, I suppose, aren't they? But yeah, I mean, that to me, I mean, that was just massive. You know, he's a whole person in weight. And, you know, I wouldn't be able to obviously pick him up, <laughs> you know, couldn't put him on my lap. He was just huge. But he was a lovely, you know, very loving, you know, very loving dog. You know, family kind of, well, yeah, part of the family. So, you know, his size was no lesser, you know, he was no lesser of a loving kind of cuddly dog if you see what I mean but you just couldn't carry him about obviously and let's face it I mean he didn't sleep in their bed but I mean if he had it done oh my gosh he'd have taken up half the bed wouldn't he whereas the sausage dog obviously I mean they're not taking up much room are they so they're not too terrible if you're having them in your bed and I'm not saying that everyone wants to have their dogs in their bed I mean funny enough things have done a complete u-turn haven't they I mean when we grew up as kids you know I mean, often dogs didn't even go upstairs, you know. And I mean, I'm sure there are people who are still like that, you know. And I mean, that's fantastic if you are <laughs> if you are good enough to train your dog to not go upstairs. Obviously, like I say, I'm a bit of a soft touch. So, I mean, you know, Bo was used to going upstairs anyway because she went upstairs in my sister's house. So, I mean, you know, you couldn't very well suddenly now say she couldn't go upstairs. You know, she slept with my sister, um, you know, and the other two dogs. So... You know, I wouldn't kind of dream of leaving her now downstairs because that would seem very cruel. But, you know, yeah, I get that some people would think, oh, how horrible to have your dog upstairs. And lo and behold, in your bed. But when I do talk to people, actually, it's surprising how common it is with people sleeping with their dogs. And, yeah, I mean, I was just going to say that, you know, I don't know whether that's kind of like a, you know whether we've evolved um you know but dogs just seem to be yeah even more kind of part of the family than they ever were because definitely when we were children i mean nobody would have had their dogs sleeping in their bed well i, I don't think they would i mean certainly i don't remember anyone saying that their dogs slept in their beds and like i say actually i think a lot of dogs didn't even go upstairs so, um, yeah, but I think, you know, dogs are definitely much more part of the family now, you know, almost more like a sort of, yeah, family member rather than a pet, really. Do you think we might keep her? Well, we'll have to see, won't we? I mean, I think we're all loving her, aren't we? Yeah, she is pretty nice, isn't she? I was thinking, when my birthday, well, yeah, I mean, it's not really just my decision, obviously, you know. I know. I mean, we all really are loving her, aren't we? So, you know, we'd all like to... We'd all like to keep her, I think. I mean, like I say, the big test is probably going to be tomorrow. 
when everyone's back at work and school um you know because like I say and you know this just sounds a pathetic thing to say but you know obviously I do need to be able to work and if she's going to be kind of crying or you know not sat here good you know or heaven forbid walking around my craft and eating craft things off of the floor which let's be honest I mean there are a lot of craft things on the floor then that's not going to be very practical and I don't want to be you know horrible and have to shut her downstairs you know while I'm working so some of it will be dependent on how you know how easy she is when it's just me and her really that's what I mean you know because she does love to be sat and stroked so yeah I mean normally I come back from the school and I kind of get on with videos straight away I mean I have to say in days gone by I used to come back from the school and do emails and then do videos but since obviously you know my husband moved out and you know got divorced I haven't got time to be doing that really and hence I'm so behind with my emails because every day I come home and get straight on with filming thinking oh I'll do my emails later and of course what happens I never actually really get time to go you know and do my emails so yeah I'm going to kind of have a bit of a bit of a rethink generally this year I think of um yeah my my routine generally but you know I don't know you don't know I was gonna say you know maybe if I could somehow go back to doing that you know I'd come back from the school have a cuddle with the dog you know whilst doing emails and things then you know maybe she'd be more content to sit good while I'm doing videos I don't know or maybe then she'd be even worse because she wouldn't want to then get up. I don't know. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But like I say, I'm a bit of a soft touch. So anyway, we will see. We will see. But we are loving her, aren't we? You want you want me to take you to school with her, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I think that was probably your cousin. I had meant to actually stick my phone off today. So I do apologise, everybody. I film on an old phone. Um, you know, no longer a working phone. But it's a working camera, if you see what I mean. So I don't really film on my actual phone, hence my phone can still <laughs> ring. You want to go out the room then? Good girl. Um, yeah, so hence my phone still works to phone. And yeah, I had meant to switch it off, so I do apologise for that. Because I knew that he would be phoning. Because obviously, you know, it's nice for them. They can obviously chat on the phone and they play a little game together. Oh, I don't know what it, what it is, but they play it online together. So, for you know, for some reason, they seem to be able to be on the game and be chatting. Now, I don't know whether that's through the game or whether they're on the game and through a, you know, another app. I'm not sure, but yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, last one is this one. Last one for this stage. So yeah, what I'll probably do, I don't know how long I've been filming for. I have to put my glasses on to be able to actually see how long I've been filming for. Oh, I can hear the dog wandering about. Like I say, I can't see her. Her bed is over the other side to my desk because, of course, there is not room here behind my desk for her to be. So, um, yeah, it's it's over the like the other side of the desk, and I can't actually see down there to see whether she is still in here. But I'm sure I've just heard her get up and walk off. So she's probably now, yeah, like with my daughter now, wherever my daughter is on the phone. I mean, again, maybe I will need to, you know, have a bit of a look and see if I can somehow manage to squish her, squish her bed behind my desk. But honestly, it would be a tight squeeze. And to be honest, maybe that would be worse because maybe if she was right here in view, perhaps she'd keep on jumping up, trying to get onto my chair. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's all just, you know, trial and error. So we should just see how we get on. So I've got my brown um, architecture ones. So let's just put these in. So obviously, like I say, they need to be then the flaps together. And then we're just going to glue the flaps together. So like that. Okay. 
Do it. So I've got the rest of my um, little series that I'm doing with my favourite projects revisited. So, and again, obviously only one of those has gone up so far today while I'm filming, but thank you so much for the lovely comments, um, you know, for that video and, you know, for on my um, flower bows for covers and things. Thank you so much for all your lovely comments for that. So I'm really pleased that, you know, lots of you feel inspired to maybe make some of those flowery bows. They're very, very cute, aren't they? And I just think, oh, they're going to look so pretty on a cover of a journal. So, yeah, I can just picture them looking very, very pretty. I mean, they're very girly, aren't they? But, you know, I mean, depending on the colour, you could kind of make them less, you know, maybe look less girly, couldn't you? So, yeah. Oh, healthy eating again. It's that time, isn't it? You know, 1st of January, when we all kind of make our vow to be healthy eating. Just need to run a bit of glue down there because it's... Yeah, not glued close enough to that edge. Um, yeah, when we all do our vow to be, you know, healthy eating and... Oh, well, I've fallen off the wagon already because yesterday I started, you know, thought started to mean to go on. So I started, I had a smoothie for breakfast, which was, you know, really healthy. And then guess what I had for dinner? Yeah, I had a tub of ice cream. I mean, what is wrong with me? Straight away, you know down down that rubbish rubbish eating track already and you know that's not good because here we are the third and already oh not not the third the second sorry as i'm filming this the second and i've already had a tub of ice cream for dinner instead of actual dinner that's not good is it right okay so yeah i need to need to get healthier obviously need to improve with my healthy eating right now I've just had a look so we're at 42 minutes so I'm going to save these to glue these ones together later because otherwise I'm going to run out of time um, but I might take this one which is the Paris bouquet I think because I just thought this would be quite nice and I'm going to mix it with some of the Great Expectations um, pieces, I think. So, yeah. Oh, actually, no. Sorry. No, I won't. These are some of the bits from the Great Expectations, but they unfortunately are on copy paper and not, um, you know, not thicker paper. So, uh, yeah, I won't be able to do that after all. But I'm going to use... I've got some of my fun photos pieces which I'm going to use instead so and I have not played with my fun photos um kit at all yet so yeah this is going to be a bit of a bit of playing around with that for the first time as well so it's, and I've just got kind of like some overspill you know from where I was creating that particular set which normally when I'm creating you know I would use um, copy paper but I obviously had had the wrong paper in my printer so I've ended up with it on thick paper so this was when I was having all those tons of printer problems so um, yeah I seem to have nothing but printer problems to be honest but never mind right oh so yeah hopefully we're going to have a really great year this year I've got lots of things planned for coming up on my channel it's just just having time to um, fit them all in. I know I say this all the time in comments, you know, and I know that we all struggle, don't we? Because there are so many amazing projects that we want to do. Actually, it's just getting time to do all the all the fun things that we want to do. So, um, yeah, lots of things planned, lots of things kind of, you know, buzzing around in my mind thinking, oh, you know, going to do this year, this year, this, this, this. Oh, this this year sorry that was a mouthful and a half um yeah it's just a case of actually having time to do all them things so but hopefully hopefully we will have time to do all of those things so yeah okay there we go right 
Okay. So, yeah, let's put some of these bits on. Now, like I say, this was when I was creating the um, fun photos kits. So I've got this side and I also have got this side. Um, I'm not sure. Because one of these sides is kind of like better, if you see what I mean, than the other. This photo quality paper, although it says it's double-sided, it's not really double-sided. You know, one side has got, um, what do you call, like a sort of film coating type thing. So it's not actually quite as smooth as it sounds, if you see what I mean. Right, I'm going to cut this building out. Actually, I'm going to tear this building out. Okay, so I'm just thinking, you know, we could use this as like a closure for this um, envelope. So, yeah, maybe like that. Or, I mean, you don't even have to have a closure, to be honest. You could have kind of like some wraparound or something would be quite fun. So perhaps we should do wraparound instead. So let's just tear this down. And I, in that case, I might tear down. Oh, no, I could probably put that at the bottom. Sorry lots of chopping and changing my mind here so yeah right let's bring in now do i want to use one of these colored colored eyelets oh my goodness how pretty is that yeah i think let's use that okay so mm, got some pink lace here oh my goodness oh how pretty is this yeah, quite liking how that's looking. Just got some ivory lace here, which I just I don't know. Right, I'm just going to quickly ink around this one. Yeah, so I just wish everybody all the very best for 2023. I hope everybody has, you know, the best year ever. Really, really wishing everyone some great things. So, you know, and I know I've talked about this before, but, you know, you really do feel like you get to know people on here. And, you know, sometimes there's people that I don't then hear from for a while in the comments. And, um, you know, just because I don't hear from you, you know, you're still on my mind. And, you know, I can think of several people who I've not heard of for a while or heard from for a while. And, you know, if you're someone who's commented kind of regularly and we've kind of developed a bit of a friendship you know, please know that I'm thinking of you and, you know, I hope that um, you're doing brilliantly and maybe you've just not got time to comment and that's absolutely fine. Or maybe you're watching, you know, other stuff and that also is fine. Um, you know, I just, I hope that everything's well with you. Um, you know, because like I say, you kind of get used to, you know, the same kind of people, um, you know, and yeah, you do then wonder when you don't hear from them, you know, and think, oh my goodness, I hope everything's okay with that person. Um, you know, because yeah, you kind of like feel like you do know them. And yeah, just. So yeah, you know, hope that everybody has the most wonderful year ever. Okay. I mean, it's it's not a great start, is it, to the year, to be honest, but let's not get bogged down with that, you know, with the um, situation with the kind of financial crisis and things like that. I mean, it's very worrying for all of us, isn't it? And, um, you know, I'm completely, completely with you guys because obviously, yeah, very worrying time from, you know, for me too. Um, you know. Yeah, not just, you know, because of the financial crisis, but obviously, you know, other things affecting my finances too. But yeah, um, you know, we won't kind of get too bogged down with all that. I just really hope that everybody, you know, that things kind of go well for everyone. Um, yeah. Right, now I'm going to put this in here. So let's just move this out of the way for a moment. Okay. Oh, I've kind of lost now where I am because I've put that lace on. What a wally. Oh, let's hope that I'm going far back. Okay. 
Oops, it's not really punched through that lace properly. So yeah, not quite, not quite how I planned, but never mind. Right, okay. So let's just pop this here. Oh, yesterday was such a horrible day. It was New Year's Day, and um, you know it's so nice to go like for a walk, and especially now we've got the dog, obviously, to go for a walk with. But it was just vile. It was raining like the whole day. You wouldn't have wanted to walk anywhere. Um, so yeah, I mean, we did a very tiny walk, literally around the block. That was kind of it. But today looks much nicer. So yeah, maybe we will get a walk in this afternoon. My son is having a bit of a clear out. So, yeah, he said he's going to have a bit of a clear out of, um, you know, like our eaves area in the loft. So, yeah, I mean, that's a really helpful job. So, yeah, isn't it lovely when you have that kind of New Year thing where you think, oh, I'm going to get on top of all this stuff. I can't claim to be obviously, you know, pretending I'm going to get on top of stuff. I should. But, yeah, I'm a bit too much of a hoarder to actually kind of then get on top of anything. But I definitely should. Definitely should. Now, just got this flower, which I'm just wondering. It is a bit bulky. Yeah, it's probably a bit too bulky for that, which is a shame. Um, I'll just see whether I've got any. Okay, I've got these little bows. And they're not really the right colour, are they? Nope. Okay. What else have I got? Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so I've got these tiny flowers. Honestly, it's come to that point where I actually can't wait for tomorrow. Um, you know, kind of like everyone back out of the house, I can just get back on with kind of working and, you know, doing stuff. And, you know, like, get back to normal eating. Because I feel like I've eaten nothing but crisps. Yep. I don't know why crisps, but I'm a sucker for crisps. So I've spent literally most of most of Christmas just eating crisps constantly. Ugh, which, what on earth is wrong with me? Honestly, there's just some foods that I can't really resist. Well, actually, I struggle to resist most foods. But, yeah, crisps are a big big thing for me I do really love crisps so yeah I've been eating a lot of them you know because obviously you kind of go to the shops and you think oh you know I'm sure everyone wants some nice things in the house over Christmas I mean who am I kidding I think really what I mean is meaning is you know I'd, I'd like some nice things in for Christmas so yeah so I've eaten nothing but crisps so yeah, well, crisps and now ice cream, like I say, because I had ice cream last night for dinner, so. Oh, it's mainly me who needs to get back into healthy eating. Obviously, the children, they haven't been having just ice cream for dinner, you know. I did actually kind of, well, actually, yesterday I did a um, casserole thing in the slow cooker. So, yeah, start as you mean to go on. I thought, oh, let's be healthy. Let's do some, you know, some home-cooked food. But it was a chicken casserole. Well, of course, I don't eat chicken, so, you know, I don't eat meat. So, of course, I was not going to be eating that. Um, my daughter had a uh, boiled egg. Boiled egg. And I have to say, we also, we gave some peas to the dog. Um, oh, she loved them. Because, you know, I thought, well, we've got to give her some healthy sort of bits. Because, yeah, she's a bit of a scrounger when it comes to food. I mean, you know, hey, don't we all just like food? And her stuff does look very rubbish and bland, so... Yeah, anyway, she likes peas, we've discovered. So that's quite a good one, um, you know, to be able to kind of just feed her as a little kind of goody snack. Because I also had read somewhere that they like blueberries, which my blueberries are frozen. So whether or not that was why she didn't like them, I'm not sure, but she didn't think in on the blueberries. But she did like the peas. So, yeah, you know, hopefully she will... Um, have a few healthier snacks than just, you know, scrounging things like crisps. Obviously, she um, couldn't scrounge the ice cream when I was eating it, but yeah. Right, okay. So, I'm just thinking. Now, of course, what's happened, I've put that lace overhanging on here. So, that's going to be a problem now. Okay. 
just poking this twine through. Okay, oh my goodness, come on. Let's just cut this down. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Look, if we don't pull it too tight, it's it's okay. It kind of like works okay. So yeah, we can just wind it round like that. Now I am just wondering whether we want to have this ivory like a little bit kind of like here. I don't know, maybe that's a bit weird. So perhaps we'll just leave it like that. But isn't that just such a pretty little piece for journals? So, you know, because sometimes you can go overboard with the decorating, can't you? And it is always tempting. You know, I do love going overboard with the decorating, I must admit. I am one of those people who likes to go overboard with the decorating. Oh, loving my fan heater. Yeah, I've got it on right now. So yeah, it's um, it's been a good good purchase so far, and it's really not noisy, so it's not kind of like intrusive or anything. So yeah, really liking it. I have to say, I'm now thinking I wish I hadn't put that lilac flower on, so I'm just going to peel that off. Okay, oops, oh gosh, and in the process, I've now peeled off both of them. Oh my goodness, what a mess. Right, so I'm going to just swap that for, I think, a couple of these little um, kind of like flower trimmy type things instead. So, yeah, let's just go for these instead, I think. I just thought that lilac, although at first I thought it looked quite pretty, it's not really quite right, was it? So, let's put this on instead. Now, which way up does that go? Don't come up that way that one down okay right yeah like that yeah for some reason that lilac one was just not really quite working for me so I think that looks looks better it's weird doesn't it how just slightly changing things can just transform something so yeah much better now much prettier I think so, how many did we make? Obviously, I have got quite a few left to glue. So, sorry, I've just got some glue here. Um, got quite a few left to glue, but if I just include them, because they're not really going to take five minutes to just assemble. So, one, and two, three, four, five, six seven eight we've done eight which actually i have to say that's um a record for me because in the last mass make of these i did seven so yeah it's not very often that i've actually got faster normally i'm horrified at how much slower i've got so yeah all good okay so i really hope that you like these double um envelopes for your junk journals and yep i hope you all have a fantastic week in your first week of 2023 um and yeah hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun over the next few days doing the projects revisited series so i hope that you're all enjoying that and yeah thank you so much for watching i will see you guys tomorrow have fun thanks then bye